Hello, Buck Paulson with you again, and today we're going to do Pushing for Home, a beautiful seascape with a dramatic sky and a sailboat out in the middle of the ocean. And what we're really saying is today I'm going to show it to you step by step. And as uh, one fellow said, feather by feather the goose is plucked. So that's really what it is. What you're really saying is you're doing it a little bit at a time. Let me tell you about how this painting was conceived. The um, sky was from a slide that my father took. The sailboat was from a slide a friend of mine took. The um, drama in the painting, the kind of where the dark meets the light in the middle of the ocean, was where Turner, the influence of uh, Turner, and then, of course, the big feeling in the ocean is um, from being out on the ocean. But look at, look at me a minute, because I want to tell you something else, OK? So I put several things together. I was out on the ocean and felt the ocean and could do the ocean. And then you might say, well, that's fine for you, but uh, we're not at the ocean. Let me tell you something. My teacher, Claude Buck, told about going out early in the mornings in New York City 4.30 in the morning, going down to the park and painting a snow scene in the middle of the winter. He'd get up 4.30 faithfully and paint the snow scene. He said years later, by the fireplace, warm fire going, he painted better snow scenes away from the snow. So you don't have to be there in order to paint a subject. It's uh, a lot like uh, there was a famous artist named George Bellows. And he was a master of realism. Everything he painted was from life, the realism, and all that. And once he painted the crucifixion, and somebody criticized him for that, and they said, huh, Mr. Bellows, you weren't at the crucifixion. How could you paint that? And he says, well, I don't remember da Vinci having an uh, invite to the Last Supper. OK, ready to paint, ready to paint. We're going to come down and look at the um, palette. And we have sort of a limited palette, which means very few colors. We have, again, a base color. This is made from one part of phthalo blue, one half part black, that's ivory black, and one fourth part phthalo green, very dark. OK, now, when we say uh, parts, how much is a part? It depends on how much you need. In this case, I would say the blue was about an inch and a half. Oh, it'd be easier if I say the blue's an inch, okay? The blue's an inch. Black's a half inch, green's a fourth of an inch. Whatever you need. But you can do it by formula, and that's very helpful. When I put some of the base color into white, this is what it looks like, and this is for the top of the sky. I'll also use some of it for the lower part of the sky. I'm going to come over this way then. We have our middle water, which is black, phthalo green, equal parts, yellow ochre, equal parts. I would say that's about a fourth inch of each. And then we add white to it. That'll be the middle water. For my cloud color, this is kind of a dark color. Dark cloud color is um, my sky color with a little bit of red added to it. Over here, we have yellow ochre and white. And then we added a little bit of the middle water color to it. The kind of greenish color was added to that. That's going to be for my cloud highlights, the first lights. And then we have the uh, base color with a little red in it is for the darks on the sailboat. Jumping across here, we have yellow and white. Yellow and white will be used for final lights in the clouds. We'll use some of this on the sail and some for the highlights in the water. Let me jump back here just a minute. <clears throat> Over to the cloud lights, this will be the first color that I'll put on the sails. So in other words, and, and also on the boat. In other words, I can then come and put emphasis on with highlights later. Down here, we have sky color. I've added a little extra white to it, and then some red. Isn't that a pretty red? Today, my, my good friend John Snyder was spending the whole day with his fingers spreading out like that. Isn't that something? I came into the office wearing a white shirt, and he spread this all around. Would you look at the shirt color I'm wearing now? Thanks, John. Appreciate that. OK, let's go up and, oh, we need to look at the brushes, don't we? Slide over here at the brushes. I'll try to make this where you can see them. Brushes. We have a, uh, I'll slide them just a little forward. I don't know if that's helping or not. But anyway, we have a uh, floral brush, large sable, flat brush, round sable, flat sable, 
bristle fan, twiggy brush, another sable, the bunny brush, the buck's mop brush, a huge knife. You know this knife, uh, let's see, when was it? 26 years ago, 1962, or say 27 years ago if you just happened to buy the video a year late, you should have had it sooner. 26 years ago, I gave this brush to Claude Buck, and then after he died, his wife said, is there anything you'd like? Well, I didn't uh, say I want all those paintings. I said I want that knife, so that's good. 26-year-old knife, another knife and another bunny brush. Uh, let's say something about the priming of the canvas. The canvas has been primed with, with a uh, light, soft green, and I'll tell you the three reasons we have it. One, you're letting some of the green show through. Gives unity to the picture. You're letting some of the green show through different colors. It gives uh, quality to the colors. And then you have places where you want some of the green showing. But let me give you the final reason. Claude's teacher was Emil Carlson. He painted a lot of still lifes. And at the end of his life, he started painting seascapes. He wrote to Claude and said how he painted the seascapes. He would paint them with a, uh, let's see, he called it opaque watercolor green earth, which is terra vert or green earth and white. That color looks like what I have on the canvas. He sold a painting for $60,000. Let me have that color for no other reason, right? Forget unity, forget quality. No, but those things all help. But th that's great to know that a, a fine artist used uh, what we're using. Okay, we're ready to paint, and we'll start up in the sky. When we go to a canvas, it isn't always that you start at the top, come all the way down, and sign it. When I teach in workshops, did that sound like a paid political, I mean a paid advertisement? There's workshops around, check for Bucky. Okay, when I do in workshops, I'll go from area to area jumping around so that I don't find a student being lost in the sky and staying there all day. We'll do a little bit and then jump down to the water. In a studio, I, I sort of like to work where my interest is and then kind of work out from it, let it dry a couple days and come back and uh, work further. We're going to do the same thing today. We're going to work to a certain point, stop, because we want to work further on it when it's dry. Okay, so we'll, we'll let you know when that happens. We'll start with the uh, large bunny brush. I put just a little bit of medium on it and we're coming to the base color into white, which is, gives us our kind of blue color for the top of the sky. Roll it around. This is such a great brush. It does lose its hair a little bit, but that's all right. We'll take them off while they're wet. It reminds me a lot, uh, if you ever have a little disagreement with, uh, I don't have any disagreements with my wife, so we'll say with somebody else. If you have a disagreement with somebody, correct it while it's wet. What does that mean? Get rid of your arguments right away, because the longer you stay with being mad at each other, the harder it is to correct. And the same way here, the quicker you correct a mistake, the better it is. Okay? Back to the brush. Back to the brush. Okay, we're pushing down onto the canvas. We have covered, but again, decide how much of the underneath you want to show through. This spreads the paint out evenly and removes a little bit of the excess. Okay, I'm going to come further with that same color, though. We'll come down on the sides. And what I took as a little bit of a time saver, I took the same color and kind of surrounded the sails so that I can just come up to it very quickly. I would suggest that you do the same thing when you're putting in the sky. Come very close to the sails so you can save the drawing. You're uh, not being what you'd say <clears throat> very careful on this. You, you can splash down in the water a little bit. If some gets down too far, the next color will just blend right into it. Okay, you're coming across what which, uh, which was a line. If you uh, very quickly find the line after you've covered it by scratching. You heard that, didn't you? You knew I wasn't faking you. I really scratched. Okay, that comes right down to that. Come around all over here. And what am I doing? I'm leaving the blank spot. Oops. Emergency, emergency, SOS. Got help right there. Thank you. OK, that's going to be leaving a blank spot where the clouds will go so they'll look a little brighter rather than working wet into wet. 
You don't have to cover this too evenly because, again, we're making use of the under canvas coming through. When a person sees this, they don't know, as they see a little uh, green uncovered, whether you left some green coming through or that's the color you put in there. That's the nice thing about having a prime canvas. You don't have to explain the, the blank spots. Okay, we have that on, and I had a drawing there, and I came a little past it because I don't want to be tied to the drawing. We use it only for the boundaries. We clean the brush, and then we're coming down. This is our uh, cloud lights. Well, let's just say this. These are, this is our cloud. We haven't put the highlights on. This will be the light part of the clouds, and then we'll go lighter. This is the yellow, ochre, and white, and then we add a little bit of the middle green color to it. We haven't put the middle green on yet. Okay, this is the uh, same brush, the bunny brush, pushing around, and this is uh, rather dry because I want quantity up to the canvas. What do you think as you're doing this? You think of seeing objects in the sky. You're seeing, what do we want to see? Well, animals are sometimes good. You know, that looks like an elephant, doesn't it? Dumbo. No, I, I meant, uh, you heard the elephant Dumbo, right? I wasn't, I wasn't criticizing the painting. Okay, we'll push around here. Try to have, so the uh, bottom of it has a little variety. I like to feel like it's almost little wheels or legs going down. And then what you're doing or accomplishing by that you have little dark spots which give some shadows into the clouds. You push this around pretty good. You're pushing on up into the blue, which softens it. So it's a little bit wet into wet, but more so on the edges rather than on the interior. This is my slide from Papa. While I'm up here, I'm going to take just a little bit of that and push up into there. What that will do will sort of show where the light's coming from and softens as the cloud goes against the, uh, the blue. Reaching down, grabbing some more paint, quicker than the eye could follow. Push around, push around, and same thing happens here. We're going to leave a spot, and we'll push the dark clouds up into that. So part of the dark clouds will be darker where it goes on the dry canvas, and part of it will be soft as it blends into what's there. Okay, we'll come down to the palette, and this is, uh, my cloud color, it's very close to the color of the sky, but I've put a little cadmium, no, what kind of red is that? Permanent red into it. Very nice red. Another time of using just the straight paint without any um, extra medium. So you can see the difference, subtle, but you can see it between this color and this one. The same, only this has the permanent red added to it. Okay, once you put some on like that, you think, boy, that, that's a lot of paint. That's going to be going too high, too dark. So I'll clean the brush and just feather it sort of gently into the light cloud color. See, that, that controls it in, in holding it to a space. Spread this around. I can remember at the age of seven, eight, nine, as an athlete, not an artist, but standing looking and watching, you, uh, watching the clouds. See, I was playing baseball, I'd pitch, and then as the ball would be hit, I'd watch the clouds. I see like I had a lot of time to look at the clouds when I was pitching. Those balls sure went far back in those old days. We used to have what they call the rabbit ball. It went so far. OK, there we are. But you, you can really discover things in clouds. This was before painting. I, I would, just be fascinated by watching the big warriors, the Greek warriors, and some of these big animals come marching through the sky and then move on and, and a new one would approach. Oh, I like that. That's soft and that's nice. Where do we go next? Okay, we're, we're going to stay um, around here. I think it'd be a little easier if I put some color on the uh, the boat and the sails right now. And let me repeat what I said. When I do the uh, sails and the lights on the back of the boat, I'm going to use the cloud color, which is not as light as it will eventually be when I use yellow and white, so that we can step up and go lighter than when we first put it on. And that way, it won't look flat. It'll have uh, vitality. OK, I'm using just a flat sable brush and dry brush. 
It depends a little bit on your white. I've chosen to use soft white and titanium white equal parts. And that, that makes it just uh, what I want for this particular painting. Is my finger making so you can't see what I'm doing there? I hope not. I'll turn it on the side a little bit here. You're going to want, again, to be very careful on those lines. Turn it around so you can, you can fill it in very carefully. The large sail, though that is the large sail. You know what they call that? That's the jib sail. I remember that term. This is the main sail. Does John Snyder, does he sail? Does he, would he know these terms? I know he can fly an airplane. And he sure can move that thing. OK, this, uh, this is just filled in flat with no character. The place that I would have character on the sails would be in this, uh, the jib sail. We'll put a little bit of the blue from the sky in there. And I'll put very small amounts so it doesn't look quite as dark on the outside. And after you put that on, we'll blend with just a slight zigzag. Corner the brush, slight zigzag, and then soften out the zigzags. Just blend them out a little bit. Now, that is not great, but that's the technique. You zigzag. I can just hear John Snyder saying in the control room, why isn't that great? OK, well, we need to make it great. We need to come down just a little bit more with this. You, you, if you put pencil lines on, be sure and spray them with a fixative so that um, they don't mix in with the paint the way mine are doing. Those were not sprayed. <clears throat> we're going to do this to a halfway point and then bring up the other canvas, as I said. OK, on the outside, we need to have just a little less uh, light. I'm picking up some of the cloud, uh, yeah, the cloud color and a little bit of this cloud light color and just mix those together. So it's, it's a little darker, sort of in the shadows. And then just the smallest highlight will come along the edge of the um, turn up sail here. Now the same color, the um, cloud highlight color, goes on the back. A little test, is this called bow? Or is this called stern? Isn't that something you need to know if you're going to start saying, put it on the bow. We have uh, the little cabin. And this has the same light. And this one has the same light. I won't take time to put the little portholes in there uh, until we get to stage two, the next uh, painting next stage of this one. Now I'm coming back with the same color that I used up here on the sail, and I'll put this on the little roof and on the deck. And the color that I want on this side is going to be the um, same as I used up in the sky, the blue. And same thing here. Let's go sort of faintly with the colors. And the last thing that I'll do around there, I'll take some of my um, base color and my permanent red. Uh, am I running too fast? I don't know if you're, you're seeing this. You've seen the palette, but I need to show how you load that just a little bit. Just kind of mix it in slightly, just on the edge of it, this dry brush. As you come up to the uh, boat, then just a little bit under here as an accent under the roof. A little bit as you go down into the, what do they call it, galley? Anyway, it's down below. And for the mast, I need to have a little bit of that showing. OK, so this is, uh, this is how much I will do on the boat once I go a little higher here. This is uh, taking just a little bit, make that mast point up there. You need to be sure that slants the same way. OK, we'll put in the middle water. Middle water. I'll use the black and phthalo green and e yellow ochre, equal parts. White's been added to that. Take the bunny brush. I might have to use just a small little bit of juice on that, just a little bit of terps. Odorless, of course. This goes, when we say middle water, this is what I mean, the area.
that goes as a nice blend into the uh, sky. You don't see a horizon there. It's sort of misty-like. Pushing for home, this fellow uh, needs to get back into shore. That, those are ominous clouds, although I think the storm has passed and he's weathered it. He weathered it. He went below deck. I don't even see him there. We'll have to put a man in this boat. Okay, that's the middle water. We'll leave it just like that temporarily, and we'll come down to the uh, pallet and pick up our dark water. This is the, um, our base color, the phthalo blue, one half black, one fourth uh, phthalo green, and that's just straight dark black. Isn't that, isn't that pretty? Let, let, me, uh, let me say something to you. Uh, when, when I go around teaching, and of course I know that other students have been uh, with, I mean, these students have been with other teachers, and you say, sometimes they'll say, uh, use black, and they say, oh, my teacher said never to use black. Well, it's, I like black. I, I probably use it black and green, black and alizarin, black and yellow. I, I like it that way. There's, <clears throat> there was a book uh, on colors, and I know, it, let's see, what was it called? The Art and Enjoyment of Colors, and one chapter was on the use of black. One chapter was on the use of white. So uh, you can use it. I sometimes throw out a sarcastic uh, comment and say, well, it's all right if you know how. But let me, let me make a comment as, as long as I have you out there looking at me in regards to other teachers. I'm going to hold up a brush. This is what I call the um, teeter-totter principle. The teeter-totter principle is this. With my children, as they were growing up, I could always teeter-totter with them. If, uh, if I needed to move closer, and put them out the end to balance the weights, maybe that'd be for one of them. Or for two, maybe it could be about the same. But I could always teeter-totter with them by adjusting where we sat on the teeter. <laughs> or you say teeter-totter, okay? But one principle held true. The only way that my child or children could go up was for me to go down. That does not hold true in art. You do not make a teacher look better. You do not raise a teacher in anybody's image by pulling someone else down. Now remember that. There's room for all. There's different viewpoints, and thank goodness that there are different viewpoints. But you, you appreciate everyone. OK. We, we have the dark color on the brush, remember? This is the, the bunny brush. And that's filled it up pretty good. And we come up to the canvas. Push this back and forth. This, uh, I can see on a large area like this, I better come back with just a little terps and use some more of the dark. Yes. <laughs> you know it's water. It's running. Isn't that pretty? But we can't leave it like that. We'll just spread this out. I do have some lines down on the interior there that I could save very quickly as I cover that I, that I scratch where they are. Do you like that noise? Remember back in, when I was in uh, country school, and uh, middle of the winter, and the teacher would scratch on the backboard with chalk, and you just, oh, boy, that was tough. I hope that's not happening to you. Okay, after you fill this in, you will want to take some of the same color. I better fill it in before we get ahead of ourselves. Now that's uh, just brush back and forth without being too even in strokes. While you have some of the color on the brush, you come up into the middle water area and brush it. Now see, as it mixes into the green, it softens. It softens a little bit so it's not quite as dark, but it becomes some of the darks in that area. And you're really saying that you're making the outside edge just a little less um, light so that you stay close to the, the sailboat. Come over on the other side, blend just a little bit. And a little bit of this as a shadow from the sailboat, so it helps set the, the boat down into the water. OK, now the next thing I'm going to do is to take and work in the, um, the lower water area. The first thing I'll do on that is just take a paper towel. And we'll go where we have these lines. I, I might use a knife just to uh, scratch those lines a little better. That, that works better. Just think, it's cold, and think of this as being chalk. 
I hope that gets you. Okay, well, now we have the scratch lines in, and we're going to take and wipe a little bit of paint away from behind what we're calling the trough area of the wave. Not too evenly done. You're not going clear down to the blank canvas. You're just removing a little access. As you remove the access, you keep moving the paper towel around so you're coming out with a clean spot. And whatever you do, don't get any paint on your hands. Okay, now we take uh, our sable brush. This is the uh, large floor, floral brush. And I'm coming down and picking up some of the sky color, the sky blue color. And this is a dry brush. Go back and forth in that. Boy, that, that's a nice color. I love that color. Come up to the canvas, and we go right where we wiped out the paint. Same position. And then you sort of wipe back a little bit, soften. I might have been a little generous on the, on the amount of blue there. So if that's the case, I'll take a little bit of my dark, which is the watercolor, and come back to it and just blend in. Yeah, that, that's a little better. I did that without thinking that I probably should have started over near the center of interest first, where we can make it quite light. And then when you don't have much paint on the brush, you go to the outline areas. See, this is all preparation before you put uh, detail into, the, into this area. So you have a lot of little, you, let's see, you can see a lot of little peaks. See, that's a peak, peek a peek a boo. Try to think variety again, so they're uh, a little different. See, this one has kind of a double notch. This one has one. Here's one up here, longer on one side than it is on the other. And then you have, uh, even though we have contrast there, I need to soften a little bit. This is going to be our strong contrast. OK, this is a good place to stop. We'll pick up a canvas that has been prepared just as far, and it will be dry. OK? See you soon. Well, we're back with a dry canvas, and that's going to make it very easy to touch around and put some extra highlights on because uh, they'll show up a little bit better being on the dry canvas. I'm going to start uh, up in the top of the sky. And at this point, we're going to use yellow and white. This is uh, going to be the highlight on top of what is already there. Now, what already is there, as we said earlier, was the uh, green and yellow ochre and white with a little green into it. Now, as I come up here, this is a, which brush? This brush. OK, this is a large bunny brush. And you're using just a small amount of paint. I'm sort of staying away from the edge of the, can uh, the cloud, just sort of down in the interior, which gives a little feeling of form from light into a kind of a secondary tone before it reaches the edge, which makes it very soft. You uh, thin it out when it's on top of dry paint, then you have nothing to blend into, so you thin it out for your uh, next value. My center of interest in the sky would be right in this area as it's above the, uh, the, the, the sails, which makes them very dramatic. OK, we can take a touch of this color, much less of it, but a touch of it over to the left. And I'll thin that out just a little bit more. It, it makes it so you have two values there, but they're very much closer together than over in the center of interest. Then a little bit up there, a little bit here, and then possibly even a little bit again off canvas, borrow some of that, where the sun is coming from. So it softens around that cloud. And by having less contrast, you're not as apt to stay there, to dwell there. You come down into the areas where you have great contrast. As we come down to the lower part of the sky, I'm going to pick up a little pink. Now, this is a pink that's made from the sky blue color, a little bit lighter than the sky blue color, but the same thing, and then uh, red. See this beautiful red mixed in? That makes the pink, which really gives a little more hope in this painting than the original might have. If you put that on, you, you feel like there's a cause to go over there. That's a little bright. 
so just wipe a little bit. That warms up the sky slightly, and it has a vitality that uh, was missing without it. Use the same color a little bit higher, right up close where the uh, light and dark of the cloud meet. That softens, and it gives uh, more color in it to it, too, so it doesn't look like LA smog coming up the coast. Boy, you're going close to the sails there, Bucky Baby. You sure you know what you're doing? Yeah, because if you get on it, so what? A little pink on the sails even looks good, doesn't it? Over on this side, some, but not as much as in the front because you're, you want to feel like you're looking where, where you're headed. Okay, that'll be enough on that. Let's come then down to the sailboat. Now, the sailboat, we talked earlier about having uh, the same color as the clouds had on so that we could go a little lighter. And notice how much lighter it looks when we've come later with the highlight on top of the clouds. The same thing's going to happen on the sails. But watch where you put it. You put it just on the edge. And as you blend it, you leave a lot of the first color on, so you get just a little highlight. See, this is talking about what's nearest to you has more light, so it's kind of a contrast that's bent towards you. Interior highlight. Same thing, not all the way up just a little bit down for the accents. We keep the accents closer to where the bottom of the sailboat is so our interest stays in here rather than being pulled right up high. A little bit on this side and that's also at the low, lowest edge. I better fan that just slightly so you don't have too sharp of an edge where it's meeting the dark. You could probably do the same thing wet into wet I'm not saying you couldn't. I'm showing you a technique that I use. But that doesn't make the others wrong. Remember the teeter-totter. OK, we have just a small little bit of that sail showing as it comes down to touch the edge. OK, the same color is put on there and at the back of the, of the boat. And this, uh, this whole thing is filled in flat. I'm going to do something that's going to help me, and that's going to be leave a little blank spot where that dark is going to go through there. Oh, thank goodness. Because it's a little easier to put the dark on, on dry canvas. That's a little trim. If, if you want to put it on the whole thing and then let it dry and come back with the trim, that would be all right, too. You want to be uh, quite careful with that. This is going to be trim time. <coughs> right on canvas. This is the uh, base color plus red. It's very dark. It's a dark brown. I'm using a round brush. This is uh, a number 12 round brush. And as we come up to the sailboat, we'll put it right at the back. See, I saved a spot for it. <laughs> Didn't that look nice? OK, we need one more of those, and that would be it for the trim on the side. Here's where I do not have any lines first. This is a, a way one teacher would do. He'd kind of make little dots where he wanted to put the, tri uh, the line, where he wanted to put the line, whatever he was drawing, and then just uh, connect the dots. Thank you for connecting. This, uh, let's see, this uh, needs to have a little line coming down here with the same color. And then on this side of the sail, you have just a slight little rib showing on those. They're just parallel little lines. Not, uh, they're very faint, faintly done. OK, that, that's good there. <coughs> Where else do we use this? Oh, the little portholes. We don't have any portholes yet. And that's the same dark brown. Little round ones there. Little one there. And that should be enough of that. <clears throat> what we do need to put on now is um, a small line. I'll use a twiggy brush and I think a little juice. What, what color do I want? I don't want it too light, so I'm going to use the cloud light color. This, um, 
this is going to be a long line. Very, isn't that a nice brush? I, I can see where the line was, so as I put this on, I'll just go thinly there. I don't know if you can see it, but you need to have that on to follow. And if, if, as you put this on, you can almost have a little skipping places where it isn't too solid because it, you're a distance from the sailboat. Boy, that's a nice line. Good job. Okay, over here we have a little, I guess they call it a sail spreader, don't they? Huh. I, I kind of feel like Dell knows what the terms are because he used one term when the switching that, you know, I wish I remembered it. Mesen sail, mesen sail, I, I think that was it. Okay, here comes another line that comes down to that and then it comes down lower See how I break the line, I'll draw it a little bit of ways, skip, lift the hand. You're not having to start one place to go down the other. I saw one person, they used a uh, pizza cutter. They ran through their paint and just goes, <laughs> that was nice. Well, I guess we have a little aerial down here too. Okay, uh, next let's put on uh, the little, um, we do, oh, I'll tell you what. You know the original, can you see the original? Would you point over in the original just a minute? And I'm going to kind of walk over there, too. No man. No man in the boat. Well, we need a man in the boat. This, let's take some of the base color. This was uh, with a uh, round brush, and this is my base color. And we'll set him right back in here. A little head, a little square rectangle for the body and a little arm leaning back there. And we'll take some of our uh, sky blue color, same brush, and give him just a little shoulder there. I, I know this is small, but it, it must be impressive because uh, the other one didn't have one, and here we're doing this just, you know, free, free for, for all. But you need to have a man. Okay, now back to the Twiggy brush. This is with a little juice, and we're coming with the um, same dark color that we're using on the trim. And we come up, and this will go. We have to put a little uh, line right there, a little, I don't know what they call those, but this is going to be holding up the little railing going around there. And then draw the railing right through the man. See, I did the man in first. Has a little slant there. And finally, on that, we need to put uh, we need to put a little, what do you call it, life preserver. So I'll take some of the uh, dark brown color and a little of the yellow color, and that'll give me um, a nice little lifesaver color. Lifesaver. Put a little horseshoe shape. A little bit of highlight on that with a little yellow and white. Don't want it too, uh, too sparkly, but just right. Okay, now I need to take a small brush. Do I have a small brush? Same Twiggy brush. Watch, watch this. You, when I say watch this, I want you to watch the canvas. At the bottom of the sailboat, notice what's going on. A name. And I'll tell you what the numbers are here in just a minute. And then a one. What does that say? It says RT1. Say it fast. It. No, RT1. Okay? We can put just a spot of red up on the uh, sail. Let's see. Not on the sail yet. We'll put this right on this line. Seems like we got another one of those. Well, there's, I have to put a little red here, which is merely color, rather than saying it's a, a name of something or a, a line or anything. Just a little red there. Okay, I, I want to come up to the um, top. I, I put this on the first stage, so, but we sort of lost it there. This was the little uh, top of the mast there. Okay, we, we can't skip it because I know you've seen the original, and we have to put on a little bit of a number up there. Here we have a red, and it's uh, sort of curved like that. 
It's almost like an upside down L. Put a little bit of a um, number inside. Uh, you want 633? No, let's put number seven. Why would we put number seven? One digit. Good thinking. And then some blue from the sky. And this comes at the uh, bottom. It's another L, backward L. Those things are done sort of fast, but it does give a little bit of character to that that you, that you don't have otherwise. OK, let's go to the middle of the um, canvas. And we're going to put on some foam patterns. We'll put on a little sparkle highlights. And then we'll come down to the big water. OK, in the middle of the water, the first uh, color that I'm going to use, I'll try to use the uh, middle of the water color plus a little bit of lightener from the clouds. That gives me a nice soft green. This will give me some foam patterns. Just a little sort of sparkles out in the middle of the water. I'm using a twiggy brush. And then I'll come back with a uh, sable brush and push that around a little bit so it's not quite so sharp. Pick up that brush quickly. Just brush it out so you see it. But it's not the main feature. The main feature in this area will be the reflections of the sail down and the back of the boat down and just a little uh, sparkle as a highlight of the wave hitting against the front of the boat. OK, so I'll do this with the uh, yellow and white. And I'm using the same uh, sable brush. We'll come up and straight down, but yet you sparkle within the area so you can have a little of these dancing around because the water's turning and moving. Now this cuts or touches right against the dark. Isn't that a nice contrast? And likewise, at the back here, the bow, sparkle against it. And we can take a little bit, so that's not too isolated, and just splash a little bit along there. That's just highlights from the uh, sky hitting the water. I'll, I'll have to touch those a little bit, because they're a little strong. And then we, we said about the other one, the splash as it's meeting the front of the boat. Keep wiping off so you're only working with a small amount of paint, sort of dry brush-like. And then as we, uh, I'll, I'll borrow just a little bit of this paint, and we'll come over to these waves, which they'd have a little bit of light on top, but very insignificant as compared to the uh, left area or the center area. OK, now what about out back? Same need, just a little, so you sort of feel like a top edge of the water there. All right, now let's come down to the uh, big main water. And let's come back with uh, the floral brush. And we'll use some of the twiggy brush, too. What I'll start with will be the uh, blue color, sky color. We put this behind the water, behind the waves earlier, but it was into wet paint. Now we're putting it on on top of a dry canvas. So we have to use less, as it would be very uh, vibrant. Start in the middle of the canvas and spread that around. You can see where the dark is, so you're just right behind that. Once in a while, I'll cut across one of those dark edges, too, though, so it's not so stiff as if you didn't cut across. OK, now with the same color, but a different brush, we'll come down with the uh, twiggy brush. And this, uh, we use a little bit of juice when you use this. It flows much more freely. I would say most of the time when I use this brush, I use it with a little bit of medium with it. Once in a while, when I put a highlight on a distant wave, I'll use uh, just dry brush. OK, this, this is the same color, the sky color. And we're putting a little bit of sparkle in. These will be preparatory before we use the lighter light. Now you, you add a few little incidental ones. A lot of uh, slanting type strokes. 
and you notice that they're just uh, here and there, okay, that'll be enough of those before we get down with the highlights. Now the highlights will be the same color as we used on our, um, on our what? On our clouds and on our sailboat. Let's come with first uh, the large brush, the sable brush. We'll take this and use a dry brush. We'll use this in most areas for the water, and then we might even put a couple sparkles in with a knife. See what's happening here is you're working a little bit on top of the wet blue paint, so it makes a nice blend. It softens into the blue, and the light isn't quite as uh, sharp. It's very striking, but it, it isn't hard as it would be if it were going just on top of dry canvas. Now, it does need to go on top of a dry canvas when you come down. To, boy, I keep hitting that thing, and you're too light. Wipe a little bit. It does need to have a very strong contrast when you come down in here. And as I put this on, notice I swing it around a little bit and sort of make little openings so it's like foam. I'm going to come over here just a little further, and then we'll come back to that area, the lower area, kind of get rid of the paint. But you know, I'm going to also choose to do something here. That uh, just thinned out is not going to be pure enough, so let's come back with some of the sky blue color. The sky blue color with the same brush and we'll put this down so that when the uh, light blends into it, it'll be a little nicer edge. That's a little better. Okay, now I can come back with the stronger light again because I was, I was not liking what, what was happening. And when I don't like it, it doesn't stay. A little too much there. That's another advantage if you're painting on top of the dry canvas. It's uh, quite easy to correct a mistake or either add to or, or take from it. Okay, so we'll, now we're going to come with the uh, lighter paint again. This is the yellow and white. We're down with the, f the large brush. Once you have that much on, you add a little bit of character with the um, twiggy brush. This is the twiggy brush. And we're going to, this is using the yellow and white. As you push around, sure you're going to get a little blue in it because it's been up there. Okay, let's go back. And here's where we make little arms and legs with the twiggy brush. Some of the little peaks can have uh, the twiggy highlights put on. I don't believe we're, we're going to use a knife on this. It, it seems like this is doing what it should. After you get this far, you're going to want to blend a little bit, and that's with the um, large uh, bunny brush. And remember, you're newer than the other one, aren't you? That's right. So when I put the sky in, it was a little older, it could brush a little more. So this is more gentle. I'll take and blend through there, and then wipe the brush so I don't have any extra paint on, and then blend through the uh, gleams underneath the boat, just to soften them a little bit. Blend up there. I'm, I'm just feathering it gently, slightly there. And I think we've done it all. OK, let me um, say goodbye to you. I've enjoyed doing Pushing for Home today. It's a, it's a great painting to do. You can see how much use the priming of the canvas is. You're using a very limited palette. Go to it. You can do it step by step and make a great painting. Best of luck. Catch me later.